Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a review of What Price Glory's M1938 Resistol Goggles. So as you can see, I have my pair right here on my reproduction tanker helmets that I use for reenacting. And I have an original pair of Resistol Goggles right here uh, for comparison. So first of all, if you've watched my videos before or if you've been into uh, World War II reenacting and collecting um, already, you probably already know that these goggles were um, the earliest of uh, variants used by the United States military um, during World War II and even beforehand. These goggles were actually standard throughout the war for um, tankers up until I believe it was about uh, February of 1944 where um, in a TONE, I'm not sure which one it was, but there was a TONE that you start seeing the um, Polaroid 1021 goggles uh, start to replace these in the um, TONE. Of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that these stop being used at that point, because I've seen pictures of these even up into late 44 and 1945 and used by tankers. Um, and of course, these weren't used by just tankers. They were used by um, Air Corps crews, um, Jeep drivers, other vehicle drivers, not just tankers. Um, there's plenty of pictures of these being used um, throughout the war, like I said. Now, the originals, the lenses, are made of glass. You can probably, hopefully, hear the difference in the material. I knock on them. So the originals are made out of glass, hence you can see the small crack right here. And of course, glass is a lot easier to shatter than plastic. So these reproduction lenses are made out of plastic as opposed to glass. Um, that's the only real major obvious difference between these um, other than that, it seems like, to me, everything is pretty much as close as it can be or as close as it should be, you know, in terms of uh, similarity. The part right here on my originals is kind of cracked and dried up. Um, probably some of it wasted away over time. But this rubber um, is where it should be on the reproductions. Uh, maybe Maybe a little bit. Uh, wider and thicker than it should be, um, but I've seen original examples of varying sizes and thicknesses and colors, of course. Um, I wasn't able to find a mint um, set of these, a mint original pair, for a comparison, even by searching on Google and things like that. Um, most of these do seem to have like a darker color to them and the, the rubber as well as the, um, the strap. Some of them are a little bit lighter like this, some of them darker on the straps. Um, so now, if you're looking on top of the metal lenses, you can see what is stamped on there. There's, I've never actually seen a pair of these that has a uh, date on them, so it's kind of hard to uh, gauge when exactly these were produced on um, this particular pair. Uh, but you can see the stamping right there. Resist all HBNY. Resist all HBNY on both sides. And they actually copied that stamping to a T on the reproductions here. Resist all HBNY. Resist all HBNY. Same exact spot to a T. Now there is one uh, pretty obvious drawback to uh, using these goggles, whether they're reproductions or originals. Um, it's that they almost uh, feel like you're wearing blinders when you're actually wearing them. Um, they, they, they do kind of cut down your field of vision a little bit. You can hold them back like that a little bit. But they do, they do restrict your vision just a little bit 
when you're actually wearing them, which uh, does kind of suck when you're actually driving. I, I have driven my um, my Jeep with these on. Um, it's not impossible. It's it's not that big of a deal. I guess we'll go to this nylon lining right here. I'm not sure if it's nylon or what it is, but it looks like nylon to me. It's yellow lining. It's a very soft material. Now on the originals, um, most of the originals I've found, the, the lining really, it's not usually that light. It looks more of like a brownish, mustardy uh, color, if anything, rather than like a yellow, bright yellow, like, those re like the reproductions have. Um, so it's not quite exact, um, but the material is still the same exact type of material, in my opinion, from what it appears to be. Hopefully you can see, see it a little bit here. And you can see some of the stitching in there as well, holding the goggles together, holding the goggle, uh, the actual lenses to the, uh, the rubber face, uh, face part, I guess you'd call it. And the stitching on the reproductions is uh, white thread as opposed to, I'm guessing this is a brown or a black thread. I can't really, can't really tell. Maybe it is white. It's just darkened from dirt over time. I don't know. I can't tell. Oh, yeah, there's some white. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. But, yeah, like I said, I wasn't able to find any mint originals to really compare to. So I'm only going off of my, my used originals right here, as well as some other pairs I found on uh, photos of on uh, Google and other places on the Internet. I guess next we'll go to the strap, the elastic strap the material is elastic, just like the, on the reproductions is, it is elastic, just like the, uh, the originals, it does, it does feel like the, uh, this material is a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker than the, um, originals were, but of course this could have, uh, thinned out over time. I don't really know. Never handled an original, an original pair, uh, a mint original pair of these, I should say. Um, but yeah, the strap does look pretty much the way it should. Um, perhaps there should be two smaller metal keepers on it rather than this one. Um, this is this metal or plastic, I can't tell. This keeper is, yeah, I think it's metal, but it does, this keeper is a little bit thicker than the keepers on the original, um, but of course it's a thicker strap, so I guess that's okay, considering the type of material. Um, and one last thing, this, this black, this black colored part here where the, uh, strap connects to the um, rubber and the uh, lenses, it's black. Now, on the original, it appears that it's actually leather. See that? So that's another very small drawback if you're a little bit, uh, OCD about authenticity like I am. Um, of course, when it's on your tanker helmet, you really, you really can't tell. Maybe the, I think it is, I think it is, it is leather. It's just uh, black as opposed to brown. In my opinion, uh, as far as authenticity goes, I mean, I'd probably give these uh, reproduction goggles from Workplace Glory about a 
about a nine, nine and a half out of 10. I won't give them a perfect score because there are a few things that aren't, just aren't quite right with them that uh, could be easily corrected, I'm sure. But as far as being actually uh, useful, as far as reenacting goes, I'd give them about an eight out of 10, um, just for the fact that it is a little bit restricting to your vision when you're actually wearing these. Um, so if you want something a little bit more, um, what's the word, uh, practical or um, safe, I don't, I don't know if I should use the word safe, um, I'd recommend getting an original pair of Polaroid 1021 goggles, they're correct for just about every uh, World War II uh, GI impression. Um, except maybe uh, the earliest of impressions, um, like early in pre-war. Uh, tanker like Guadalcanal um, and pre-war stuff you definitely have to have resist all goggles um, but of course if you don't have you don't have an early war tank like an M3 or an M3A1 Stuart then um, you probably wouldn't be doing an early war impression anyways but yeah these goggles are definitely um, worth picking up um, in my opinion because I mean really they're your only option as far as uh, wearing resist all goggles for World War II reenacting. In my opinion, you should never wear original resist all goggles because number one, they're very rare. Number two, they're very um, delicate. And these lenses are glass. So if, for God forbid, something crazy happens when you're in a vehicle and your lenses crack or whatever, or they explode, then there's a chance of getting glass in your face and you don't really want that and you'd be destroying a, a, a very rare World War II era item. It's not like these grow on trees. I actually got lucky when I found these. Um, I really have not seen them come up for sale very often. Um, I watch eBay all the time. I've only seen maybe one or two pairs on there. Um, they're usually pretty trashed. The lenses are completely cracked or missing or whatever. These lenses are pretty pretty decent on this, this pair. Um, but the, of course the, the rubber is kind of crumbling and hardening and falling apart. But as a collection piece, it's, it's fine. Um, anyway, back to the reproductions. Um, yeah, I'd give them probably about an 8 out of 10 for actually being practical to use. Um, the price is a little bit steep in my opinion. Um, I believe they're $115 plus shipping from, uh, what price glory. Um, I mean, if you can totally swing that, I'd say definitely get some because these are always correct for any World War II tanker impression. Um, of course, 1021 goggles, the Polaroids are... This is correct for most impressions too, and usually, usually originals are even cheaper than these repros. So, um, let me know what you guys think if you've purchased these goggles from North Place Glory, and let me know your thoughts on them. Um, overall, I'd give them probably a nine or nine and a half out of ten. Like I said, um, they're really your only option as far as reproductions of these right now, um, to my knowledge. Um, so yeah. Hopefully this helped you guys. Let me know in the comments if you guys want me to review some reproduction tanker helmets because I have a QMI, a Quartermaster Inspector uh, reproduction right here as well as a What Price Glory uh, tanker helmet that I can review for you guys. I also have two original tanker helmets I can compare um, for you. All right. Thank you guys for watching, uh, comment, rate, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the next one.